Good, Good morning. My name is Carrie. Um, I have an art store in Little Rock, Arkansas, and one of them be, before I ever bought it, um, I worked here for quite a few years and I just kept thinking how fun it would be not to work for somebody else, but to, you know, maybe I should just quit and go open a paper store somewhere and um, instead they sold it to me. So, um, so I got a paper store with, with some art supplies too. Um, <clears throat> a little bit about logistics. We're in the store right now and we're open. You may hear the phone ring. You may hear the shop dogs wrestling. Um, I apologize for that. Um, other than that, I'll just get started. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, <clears throat> I absolutely love paper. I brought my, my laptop down into the middle of where our paper is today. We have lots of decoratives. The color drawing papers are to my right. The printmaking and text papers are behind me. The watercolor papers are right in front of me. And, and we have drawers full of paper. I just, I just love paper. I've tried to find out as much as I could about it over the years, even a little bit about making paper. And um, I'm gonna talk to you just as though you were standing here in the store asking me questions about things. Mm -hmm. First off, I'm, I'm only going to talk about artist papers. I'm not going to get a whole lot into printing papers, uh, commercial printing papers or anything like that. Um, paper is pretty much defined as a sheet uh, for drawing or painting um, made out of pulp, some kind of pulp. That doesn't take into account uh, papyrus, which is some of the earliest Western papers, and um, it is a little bit pulp, but it's not formed in the same way. Asian papers also formed differently than Western papers, um, also made from pulp. Um, and then parchment, which is traditionally made from skin. Um, <clears throat> the uh, uh, there are different kinds of papers. Oh, thank you. Oh, golly. I thought that was a history of paper. She just put a history of art outfitters on there. Um, the content, the fiber that it's made out of is, can be anything from tree pulp, which is called cellulose or high alpha cellulose to um, cotton and abaca, which is kind of a banana plant. Um, Asian papers are made from um, salago and lokta and uh, mulberry and kozo and all kinds of other fibers. Um, If it please let me know if y'all have any questions it'll direct where I go from here all i'm working from is an outline. The um, the three main kinds of manufacture for Western artist papers. Are um, machine made and mold made and handmade. Um, machine made papers are made on a large. Um, uh, on a big roll that go through a machine and have um, and then they cut the paper into into pieces and frequently those papers will have two decal edges and one cut edge and that's how you can tell that something is a machine made paper sometimes it'll have four cut edges if you find a paper that has four decal edges, but two of them are a little bit different, then that's a mold made paper. And it's made on the same kind of machine, but at intervals, there are chain uh, stitches across the big roll 
and the, the paper will separate. So it has sort of a, um, you know, a, a decal where that chain is, where the pulp is thinner, but it won't be exactly the same as the decals on the side. And if any of you are wondering what a decal is, um, a decal is literally a wooden frame, usually wooden frame, that determines the size of the paper and the shape. So this is a traditional one for Western paper. And the third kind of manufacturing is handmade. And this is a mold, and this is a decal. Now, the decal edge on a piece of paper is where the pulp squishes up under this mold because it's real wet and sloppy, and you'll end up with pieces of it that go up under. Um, so that's what gives you a decal edge. If you have a paper that has four similar decal edges, then it is probably handmade. I, um, I have a question. Is it is it better to have paper that's handmade uh, of any kind than it is to have, you know, kind of like handmade bread is tastes better than? Uh, for some purposes, but not always. The other big difference between machine made and mold made and handmade papers is that handmade paper does not have a grain. <clears throat> it's a little hard to demonstrate grain over video, but I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, <coughs> the decal edges are on this side and the cut edges are here. So this one was on a roll this direction. Um, so the grain runs this way because it was literally going through a vat of pulp this direction. <clears throat> so you get this much resistance against the grain. And you get this much resistance with the grain. I can press it without creasing it or doing damage more um, with the grain than against the grain. Fabric does the same thing. Uh, a lot of things have, have grain. So it is important to know the grain of the paper if you're doing book binding and sometimes if you're doing printmaking. Um, but handmade paper won't have a grain at all. So it just depends on what you're doing with it. Uh, what is it that you're wanting to do that that you think will be better on handmade paper? Um, you know, there may be an expert in that field that would that would let you know. Some handmade paper is um, appropriate for well, book binding is where the grain is going to be the big thing, and uh, you know, some handmade paper is um, not thin enough to be text papers. But anyway, but for for like a medium, it might be I don't know like no. If if there is there a certain medium that does better with certain papers? Absolutely, okay. but it has more to do with the um, uh, some of the other properties of it than grain or method of manufacture. Um, some of the properties of artist papers. Um, most of the paper that we have in here is acid free. Um, some of it has been made from uh, acidic pulp and so it has been buffered to be acid free. Um, the uh, buffering doesn't always last. There's acid in the air so some things that you get that are Acid free uh, don't stay that way. Hi. Um, the the thing that makes it appropriate usually for certain media are the texture and the sizing. And for example, watercolor papers have multiple textures that people like to use, um, but you wouldn't want to use a really really rough paper for pen and ink 
So it would yeah, not be not as appropriate. You do a pen, an, an ink wash maybe, but not a real detailed pen and ink drawing on really heavily textured paper. Then again, pastels work great on uh, um, tougher, uh, you know, bigger, rougher papers. Uh, the other thing that makes um, papers appropriate for one medium or another is the sizing, which is the amount of starch that's in the paper. And some papers, I didn't talk to you about handmade paper as much as I wanted to. I'll probably go back to that. Um, some papers have uh, starch inside, so it's in the wet pulp when the sheet is being formed. And some papers have starch on the surface, which is after the sheet is formed, it's dipped in pulp. And some have both. Watercolor paper should have both. You don't want the paper to soak in. Um, it just sits up on the surface. It will spread, but it stays on the surface. It should never soak into watercolor paper. Um, some printmaking papers are internally sized and some are externally sized depending on the type of printmaking and then there's paper that has no sizing at all and that is called water leaf um, and there are very few of those but there are certain kinds of printmaking for example screen printing that work really really well on water leaf papers so we have to try to keep a source for those all the time um, one of the best examples I have of that <clears throat> is I have this book that I started uh, back in the 90s that has lots of different kinds of paper that I was going to practice calligraphy on. And um, one of my customers asked, could they do calligraphy on rice paper? Um, rice paper is Asian papers. They're, they're never made out of rice. Um, yeah, sorry about the noise, guys. Uh, the, um, anyway, I had to figure out how to let her do calligraphy on rice paper. And this was an example that I did. What, 24 years ago? 25 years ago um, and you see right here let me find some white paper to go behind that where that says gouache how much it spread right there so we took it and artificially sized it with a a spray and she was able to do lettering with ink on paper that wasn't sized for it. So there are aftermarket sizings and treatments that you can do to paper to make it appropriate for whatever you want. Um, let me go back to, to, to handmade paper again. Um, and like I said, y'all let me know if you have any questions. With, I, I've seen uh, in museums sometimes where uh, paper is used, paper that shouldn't be used is used for like uh, watercolor for sketches or even like an oil painting that are people putting something on it like yes to make it okay. Yeah, the um, okay, so most paper is appropriate for dry media charcoal pencil that sort of thing, although some will erase a lot better than others. Um, some papers are real soft and an eraser will just tear them up. Um, so, but almost anything will take charcoal, pencil, dry media. I had a hand paper that was real soft that was hard to erase. That you just had to kind of go with it, whatever mistake. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're doing uh, light washes or a little bit of watercolor like plein air people just do a little bit of sketching and then they go back with a wash there i mean with a a watercolor sketch they're not doing all over wet paper um 
then you can use something that is very lightly sized and it'll work just fine, but it won't take a big, heavy, wet and wet uh, technique. Um, watercolor pretty much needs to be watercolor, full watercolor techniques need to be done on watercolor paper. Mixed media paper is very similar to watercolor paper. It's a little lighter on some of the sizing. Uh, if you're doing oil on paper <clears throat> or any absorbent um, substrate, you need to have sizing on it. On a canvas, the sizing or the ground um, is the, the art world term for your primer um, is usually gesso. And there are acrylic gessos and um, gessos appropriate for encaustic. There are all sorts of different types of primers. Um, if you want to do oil on paper, years ago I had an employee that did oil pastel and he wanted to use some of the colored papers and handmade papers and decorative papers. And we called Golden and asked him about that. That was maybe. 30 years ago, and they had a clear um, material, a clear product that they recommended to use as a sizing for oil pastel or oils or anything that was going to have um, the possibility of oil leaching out or a solvent soaking into the paper. And, and, and all of that is important, like having these different things that, that protect the paper. Um, that's important for archiving or for preservation, right? Making your Absolutely. Okay. And, you know, we're not the we're not the archival police, but we do like to try to advise people, especially if somebody comes in and tells me that they're, um, you know, they're doing a, a commission for somebody on milk carton paper or something like that. And that there are ethics involved, too, that uh, need to be considered if you're selling something, uh, you know, People use all kinds of things that I don't sell. Some of them are appropriate and some are not. Um, for example, there, there are products that I have up here that can, that are occasionally replaced with uh, sheetrock mud. And that is not meant to be archival. So if somebody comes in without, you know, shaming them about what they're using, we just make sure that they know that um, if they're selling it or they wish it to become an heirloom piece to be handed down in their family, that they should be careful about what they use in it. And the paper is the same way. Um, we saw newsprint in here. Newsprint is definitely not acid free or archival. And I did a drawing one time of someone uh, who's, who's in this group right here, my daughter, when she was about seven or eight that I just love and it's on newsprint and it was probably just the freedom of not having to worry about the expense of it you know that that allowed it to come out so good but it's not going to last um, unfortunately I'll have to there she is yeah. <laughs> I'll have to uh, copy it onto something else or um, anyway you know I, you I we do have a couple of questions um, <laughs> Could Carrie suggest alternative paper that performs like arches text, text wove? wove. Um, uh, it's not readily available in Ontario. It's not readily available here either. I have to buy it like 500 sheets at a time. And uh, that was Susan. Sorry, uh -huh. about that, Susan. Um, arches text wove. So I imagine that you're making paste paper or. Uh, um, she says she's a calligrapher, bookmaker, printmaker, and paper artist interested in papers. I guess she could actually, um, you can speak. <laughs> uh, good, good morning. Uh, no, oh. Arches Text Wolf, the calligraphers use it for a lot of projects because it performs really well after it's been wet. And so I was looking for something that, you know, but doesn't buckle um, and allows us some flexibility with either making marks on it or, or uh, actually using it in book forms too. Have, uh, um, so your biggest concern is that it's buckling? 
Yeah, if you, yeah, our just text one will go smooth. And so we, uh, all the Americans are using it and we're like, oh, you know, what else is there? And of course, Zirkle was an alternative, but that mill has been destroyed in the floods last year. So I wondered what you would use. I have some, <laughs> have some Zirkle. Um, I, you know, we found out in the last two years, especially not to fall in love with any one thing yeah. because bad things are happening all over the place. Um, I was telling Scarlett just before y'all came on that I mentioned in a, in a conversation with a calligrapher on Facebook one time that I happened to know maybe where there was a stash of Lana laid. Oh no. <laughs> <clears throat> He literally called me on the phone and said, take down your post or you'll get hounded with calls. Yeah. So, so I did. <laughs> um, yeah, I like I like Zirkel. I, I will tell you that um, Fabriano Ang is very similar to the Zirkel Ang that, that, that I've had. And right now, <clears throat> I don't know if it'll lay flat if you're doing paste paper or um, washes for background or whatever, yeah. but um, I've been getting a paper from Jack Richardson that's just a really, really inexpensive, they just call it uh, a text, it's a laid paper. Okay. I like I like lettering on laid yeah. papers. Yes. I like bookbinding with laid papers. And it's just really, really inexpensive. Message me later and I'll get you a name or a number on it because we sell it for like a dollar a sheet. Oh. <laughs> and, and if you're, close to any art stores that I know, I'll send them that information. Um, cause, cause you know, we, we like to promote shopping local. Exactly. Uh, if you're, if you're doing uh, one sheet at a time, have you just thought about stretching it? Uh, well, that would be sort of what you do maybe with a watercolor paper, but that's an option um, um, just to see, right? Hang on, would, would one of you guys bring me something? Thank you. They're already bringing it. <laughs> they can hear me. Yeah, we're in the shop and I, I told Scarlett, you may hear the phone ring or the dogs. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I had a thinner one, but this will do. <clears throat> this is a piece of handmade watercolor paper and I did it five or six years ago. There's a thinner one. Uh, it's not the black one. It's okay. I don't know that it's out here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> what, what about Arkansas papers? Do you carry any locally made Arkansas papers? No, no, I, I am aware that uh, Henderson students were making their paper and selling it to Henderson students. Um, I don't know what other Arkansas papers there are at this moment. Yes, yeah, since Henderson oh, is closing. We've, we've made paper here off and on. Um, mm -hmm. I made there's, a little- There's Arkansas a couple of artists I know that make their own paper to use for their own art though. Um, and then they dye it themselves and such. So there's that option. This is a piece of really lightweight, cheap watercolor paper, just for an example. And instead of stretching it flat, we stretched it on a stretcher. And I showed that to a local artist here who did one of the earlier Get Smarts, uh, Robert Bean, and he, he loved it. It makes it a little bit, um, a little bit, it's, it's more fragile than a canvas. So, you know, you might want to resin coat it or something, both sides or, or whatever. And I have done really thin paper. Um, while it's wet, you're going to want to yeah. treat it a little more gingerly than normal. But yeah. uh, that's, an al that's an alternative to, to play with your paper. That's a good idea, Carrie. Thank you. You're, you're very welcome. And you can leave it on there or you can cut it off when you're done. And if you don't want it stretched on that, then just cut it off and, you know, do it, yeah. do frame it or whatever. 
Um, yeah, I don't know of any other paper manufactured here now. So, um, do you have favorite black papers? Yeah, um, I, all of them. <laughs> if, if the Stonehenge is making a black watercolor paper right now, that's really nice. Um, I'm sort of partial to the softer ones. So um, Arches Cover Black and there's a Hanamula Black that's very similar. Um, and if you can get a Black Ang, that's really nice. You know, something else you might like is the, uh, I guess Frankfurt and Nitikin were Zirkle also. Yes, yes. Sure. Yeah, Scarlett asked me what my personal stash was like. It's going to have to be increased by some Frankfurt here in the next few weeks, I can tell. Um, <clears throat> somebody asked what weight paper did I use to stretch on the on the frame uh, on the stretcher. Um, you can do really lightweight paper, but you have to let it pretty much you have to wet it, let it expand as much as it's going to. This is traditional watercolor stretching technique. You let it expand, like you get those little dry sponges and you get them wet and they blow up. You know you have to let it rest and get as big as it's going to. Um, you can't just you know do it real fast. And then uh, pull it around to the back of the frame or flat on your stretching board and secure the edges however you wish. Um, on the stretcher, I would staple or upholstery tack something on the back, um, like we did here. And this is uh, about a 140 pound watercolor paper, but I have done lighter. Um, I did a laid paper once and it was kind of pretty. I don't know where it is. But they just sit out here to show to customers and they get uh, handled a lot and dirty. So it's probably disappeared somewhere. Do the, uh, does the pound of paper make a difference for uh, preservation, archiving, medium? Like, what is that exactly? Well, that's probably what I would spend the most time on is the weight of paper. Um, pound weight is not a constant. If you're going to compare papers, Try always to find out what the gram weight is and use that. Um, some of the props that I brought were I went through one brand of pad, Canson XL. They're nice, inexpensive. <clears throat> uh, nice, inexpensive paper. And they put a lot of information on the front. And this one right here is a 92 pound. Okay, the pound weight is the weight of 500 sheets. So it's appropriate when you're talking about watercolor paper. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Always talk about the pound when you're talking about watercolor paper. Because the sheets are apples to apples, they're imperial size, which is 22 by 30. That size is called imperial. So they're always weighing 22 by 30 sheets. And the traditional three weights are 90, 140, and 300 pound. So 500 sheets of the thinnest weight weighs 90 pounds. 500 sheets of the medium weighs 140. That's the most common, um, size and if you don't want to stretch it then get 300 pound because it's heavy enough not to be stretched you were asking about appropriate weights for uh, different media 300 pound if you don't want to stretch it then buy that but i gotta tell you right now they're over 20 dollars a sheet retail so um so be prepared for that anything else unless they're telling you what size they're weighing then you don't know what the apples are it's not apples to apples this paper in and i got all nine by 12s 
which doesn't matter to the weight of the paper, but um, that's a Canson, right? Sorry. Uh -huh. yeah. Says it's 92 pound, 150 gram. This one is 90 pound and is 250 gram. So it is not, uh, <clears throat> I said earlier that, that I wasn't going to be talking about commercial papers, but if you ever have had to have letterhead or business cards printed, um, then you'll know that there's um, text weight and card weight and all this stuff and they, they overlap and they're, they're not the same. Um, you know, there's a text weight that's the same number as the card weight, but they're different thicknesses. So that doesn't have to do with it. The gram means that this one is going to be a thinner paper, and this one is going to be a, a thicker paper. And that is what to go by, and not the, you know, 90 pound, which it says these both are real close to. <clears throat> so just to make sure that you don't you're not disappointed when you go to get something and it's say i want 90 pound they're um they're they're not going to be the same um did i answer the question or did i just go off on a tangent i mean yeah you kind of did i apparently you don't have to that 300 pound paper is going to just lay there as you put water on it <laughs> yeah but it's also going to be super <laughs> expensive <laughs> It's gonna think of England. No, I mean like it's okay. gonna be like real. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm never gonna forget that. <laughs> um any other questions? Yes, please, people speak up. Um, are there there are certain other brands that you, you have at the store, like those big sheets, right? You have some big sheets behind you and you have some more i don't know aesthetic papers they look like they have flowers on them. <laughs> obviously i need more work on my knowledge of papers we have lots of decoratives some are printed some are printed by hand and these are on handmade paper. And then some are just. How, how do people use these? <laughs> I'm sorry, like, what do you. <laughs> Sarah's like, oh my gosh, y'all can just chip in. Like, you don't have to just watch me drown. <laughs> and me. No, I did take really my daughter, Sarah, right? Um, okay, we have this whole list that we printed up because people say, what do you do with this stuff? And so we have printed this whole list. I can pass it on to everybody in some way if you'd like. But the joke here is that you don't, um, I usually tell people whatever project that they're working on besides making a dress or painting their car. And then I had a lady order a bunch of paper from me to wrap herself for a photo shoot so we can take the making a dress part out. But um, we have sold it for lampshades and wallpaper, and um, I make books with it, and you can letter on it, and collage, you can, um, oh, yeah, one of our, uh, one of our extended family members made her kitchen countertops out of it. She tore pieces of it and overlapped them collaged them on and then resin coated the whole thing. And uh, and it, it was awesome looking. Um, I have a cabinet that I've collaged all over the front of with it. Very nice. Oh, we've had uh, people come in here um, years ago, so I'm not betraying any confidences now. And they said, I have a booth at a flea market and the guy next to me had this chest of drawers and it was all beat up. And I took it home and covered it with your paper, lots of different colors, and then uh, took it back and sold it for four times what I paid for it. And, but don't tell anybody. I mean, we had enough people come and tell us that, that finally we figured the secret was out. Um, there is a lady in Conway that makes a professional business of doing that. She also does some 
some Trump loy and uh, uses gift wrap and other papers. But um, yeah, it's it's really easy to do. It'll adhere to all kinds of things. I'm still trying to figure out how to paint my car with it because I think that'd be awesome. Is that decorative paper North American made? It's not like a, a Japanese washi paper. Yes. Is it, is it printed uh, in the United States or? Well, we have, no. Um, we have Italian, Nepalese, Taiwan, Thailand, Japan, uh, India. That, that might be it. That's that's international <laughs> for sure. So said I wanted a paper store. <laughs> I was driving to Dallas and Chicago, and the only place, two closest places I could get paper. And uh, yeah, we I, I put decoratives in in the early '90s, even before I bought the place. So yeah. So do you sell you these papers online, or is it you have to come to the store to purchase? I, we don't sell these online. Um, I can figure something out. We put pictures of them on our uh, Instagram and Facebook all the time. If there's something you like, just let me know. Um, not trying to turn this into a commercial call. No, but, no, but it's good to know you're a resource, right? Of, absolutely. Of you're like a bank. You have a bank of paper. But how do you I'm, keep the bank of paper from being paper and then like crumbling or drawing bugs or mice or being yellow? <laughs> um, okay, well, paper is always gonna absorb acid from the air. So, you know, it might take it 10 years to, to change, but it will. Um, so there are things you can do to it. I mean, if you're, are you just wanting to hoard one piece of paper and have it not turn? Well, I've been hoarding paper, but I'm not doing anything to it but hoarding it. <laughs> um, <laughs> keep it out of the light. <clears throat> and once the piece is, once it's turned into a piece of artwork, make sure that it's protected, kept out of the air and the... Um, like sealed wrap, like the, they do with meat? <laughs> you know, uh, like... No, I would think more like, you know, in a frame. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be enough. Uh, but yeah, you could, uh, you could seal it in plastic if you wanted to. Um, watercolor paintings. Um, you know, they're, that watercolor paper seems particularly prone to absorbing because of the, I guess, because of the starch on the outside. Um, and us living in a very humid part of the country or world that, uh, you know, they seem to, to turn the fastest, but UV light and all kind of, anything that'll destroy any kind of artwork will destroy paper too. My personal hoard is in a room uh, in the dark um, and some of it's in a flat file, some of it's, upstairs you know in uh in folders so what we have down here hopefully we turn it fast enough that 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 becomes somebody else's worry so, so um i do have a question here from it's a little smaller than Go, Govind, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, hi, Carrie. Has any origami artist purchased paper from you? If yes, what kind of paper was it? And I guess if you could recommend it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We sell lots of origami, well, lots of this paper for origami. There was a guy traveling through town lately. Um, that he comes in and buys paper whenever he's here. He's a traveling salesman, lives in, I think he lives in Colorado somewhere, and he was calling on customer uh, around here, and uh, he comes by to buy paper when he's in town. Anyway, he made me something. He made me a dragon. Dragon. 
dropped it. Any pretty? Can y'all hear me? I think when the dragon dropped, I muted everybody. That goes beautiful. There we go. <laughs> the dragon muted all the conversations. Um, anyway, that was out of my stash. Um, it's a paper that's not available anymore, but most of these are crisp enough to fold. Um, flat files just for paper stashing, yes. Me too. The dragon um, is on our Instagram from a few days ago. Um, of No, about two weeks ago. If uh, you want to follow the guy who did it, and he may put the instructions up <coughs> available. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I keep my eye on out for flat files. When... When I bought the store, I was in a bookbinding list serve. Does anybody remember those long before Facebook? And the way that I announced the purchase of the business was saying, uh, can y'all see them? I just bought eight antique oak flat files and an art store along with them. So yes, those are those are important things to know. Um, I want to get back to handmade paper again. Uh, the <clears throat> the way Western paper is made, get my messy table over here, is there's usually some kind of a vat. Um, and the paper goes in it, not not the pulping or anything, but you you put the mold, you put the deckle on the mold and dip this way and then shake so that the fibers interweave and that way there's no grain. And then the sheet is is attached to this and you take it off of there. For um, Asian papers, <clears throat> they use something, yeah, I said something on the keyboard, sorry about that, um, that wasn't me, I made, I made lots of numbers on the key, on the uh, messages, oh, and I sent them directly to one person, I apologize for that, Marjorie, uh, anyway, if you had different sized Deckles, different shapes. These are some that I bought from a paper making company long ago. It still determines the size and the shape of the paper. This one is an envelope. It's just not um, a square one. And we made an Arkansas one a few years ago and, and sold little Arkansas sheets of paper for a while. Um, Asian papers are made on like a bamboo placemat brush roll up kind of uh, form called a sioux and I have never been around when that was made I've seen videos but uh, haven't ever done that so I can't answer a lot of questions about that but uh, it's, it's uh, not exactly the same type of process <clears throat> um, did I get to everything? I talked about purposes for paper, that for folding, uh, for origami, to answer the question, you want something thin and crisp. There is a, a you can use handmade paper especially for wet folding origami. Um, the sizing doesn't matter on that, although it will make the paper last a little bit longer. It um, makes it a little bit stronger structurally. 
and I guess that's that's most of what I had to say unless anybody has more specific questions what are your favorite papers for doing calligraphy on then oh 90 pound hot pressed watercolor paper and ang and uh almost no envelopes or certificates that anybody brings me because <laughs> you know uh, it'll bleed right <laughs> yeah i uh i tell when i when i teach classes i tell people that uh well, first thing, when you're taking a calligraphy class, don't any, tell anybody you're taking a calligraphy class because they'll all ask you to do something. And that uh, if somebody brings you a piece of paper and says it has to be done on this, then there there is a way to uh, either adjust the paper or to choose a um, an ink or a fluid that will work on that. Um, and if they bring to you a bottle of ink and say, you have to use this, that you can almost always find a paper for it. Um, I, I usually make the unsavory joke of if they bring you something and say, it has to be written in the blood of my enemies, then you can find the paper for that. But uh, if they bring you both, then you're in big trouble because it's not always gonna work. But there is, pretty much an ink for anything. Um, I, I have specifically not tried to letter on newsprint, but I think I could if I had to. Do you have a favorite besides TextWove? Well, I don't have access to TextWove and that's why I, I'm asking. Oh, I, you've never used it? Um, years ago uh, through a calligraphy conference, but I was sort of tracking it, uh, tracking it down now. Um, yeah. But I'll, I'll choose and I'll, I'll try different things. We have the Japanese paper place here in Toronto. Right. I don't know whether you're familiar with them, but I don't know whether you order from them. But no. uh, yeah, uh, a long time ago, I did. Yeah, so they're they're doing international. And, and of course, we, we were I'm experimenting on washi for writing on now, too. So I don't know. It's just like whatever you got in your stash, you pull out and and you begin to play. Right. What we did um, in the past was spray it with a workable fix. OK. And that helped, you know. that helped a lot. It doesn't help with pointed pen with the fibers, but yes. it helps with some some types of inks. And are you a member of a, a calligraphy guild in, in Arkansas or? Yeah, we have sort of a defunct one here that okay. I'm a member of. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get it um, reactivated. But does, does the fix, is the fix the same stuff that people put on pastel? Yes. Oh, OK. I don't like to put it on pastel though it changes the colors you just have to think of it as another as a color do you have a it's choice always a color i don't like <laughs> do you have a choice between using krylon or blair um, you know blair has been difficult for us not as easy to get a hold of as krylon for a long time so even though the blair is a lower odor or a low odor yes um we just carry Krylon here. Well, whatever does the job, then doesn't yellow. <laughs> right. That's what you want, right? So that's cool. So you have a diversity of materials, it sounds like, in your store besides paper that allows artists to play. That's the Fantastic. Plan. Fantastic. It's, it's sort of been nice to, to find another place. <laughs> If I ever make it to Arkansas. <laughs> yeah, if I ever make it to Toronto. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, we're, we're, we've got a little bit of time left. So if anybody has any questions, I see people I know. I love you all. So. <laughs> Hi, Carrie? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. It looks like I'm totally in the dark here. Um, you've been really helpful in the past um, with finding the right papers for me to use for making the little paper houses that I usually work on. Oh, um, and I was recently introduced to actually making paper. Um, and one of the ingredients that I cannot find here in, uh, in Fayetteville um, is soda ash, unless I go to the place I don't want to go to. Um, can I get that from you? I'll get you some, sure. 
All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's something used mainly in dyeing. So we have a oh. fabric supply, a fabric uh, painting. I mean, a fabric uh, dyeing company that I I think I can get that from. Oh, okay, great. Um, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Um, the other material that, that they used in this workshop was, um, I cannot remember what it's called, a paper made from banana leaves, really thick. Started with an A, I, I can't remember. I had it, didn't I? No, saw it. I had it earlier. Abaca? That's it. You have it. Of course you do. Thank you. I'll put in an order soon. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We're having our big shindig on Saturday if you're in town. There's uh, a new in Fayetteville that's starting to carry some supplies. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah, it's an art party. And oh, okay. she did an art party. It's called yeah. Sleet City. Got it. She's actually been down here, spending time with me. Uh, Are we talking about me, Olivia? Asking me all sorts of questions. And she's gonna come work my art extravaganza Saturday. Oh. oh, very cool. Thank you for telling me that. Yeah, um, maybe you could talk her into bringing you some back. <laughs> I think she what, made it. What's an art extravaganza? It's our <laughs> big expo. Um, oh, and and. My husband said I wasn't corny. I was apropos for wearing my origami earrings today. Uh -huh. That's good. <clears throat> so um, is this a community event or is it? It is our store or? event. And we have demos all day long. And uh, um, starting out with Golden is going to be here first thing in the morning. If I can find anybody to live stream it, we will. We're just. The staff is just overwhelmed with hundreds of people in our small shop. So I'm not promising anything, but we'll try to live stream it. Wonderful. Good for you. I think it's fantastic what you're doing. And then having a paper resource for the world is excellent. <laughs> well, Thank like you to the Arts Council as well, uh, too, for hosting this. If I couldn't. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, if I couldn't have a paper store, if I couldn't have just a paper store, then I guess an art store is the next best thing. Oh, whoa. <laughs> okay, well, um, I think we're about to wrap up. If you guys have any last minute questions, I've got like three, three minutes or so, but uh, I dropped Carrie's email into the chat. Um, function. So if you need to look her up, we also have some some programs that Arkansas creatives might be interested in, including professional development workshops that we help reimburse you for. So we could actually help you pay for that paper making workshop if you had applied for that particular grant, which you did not because I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, but yeah, I, I'm, it's, it's really interesting paper. There's so many different papers from all over and it's been, it's been around for so long. Um, I'm currently, was, I was actually looking into um, Mexican papers recently um, and some of the, I guess, religious or spiritual uh, connections that go with paper down there. Um, so it's, a, it's, almost, it's almost very close to a religion. I have a little bit of Mexican paper in my personal hoard. No! <gasps> I want to see it. I had to buy it in Dallas. Oh, that store. I'm, I'll tell you about that someday. What about Saturday? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, um, anyway, I'm sorry about that, guys. But yeah, I have been looking at that. And I've seen a lot of different artists using paper in unique ways, uh, creating, like with, reusing magazines to create entire sculpture arts out of what Fayetteville is that? Is that Aloha? I can't say her name very well. So, um, and then we, I've seen artists recently exhibited at Hendrix and Wingate that was like incorporating papers that, and then embroidery and um, charcoal all mixed together. It was, it's a, it's pretty interesting times that, that we live in. Um, it, me with the paper cutting. Yeah. Paper cutting and yeah. So um, 
If you have any questions, uh, the, we have the emails in here. Again, you can go ahead and save the chat if you want by clicking on the three dots next to the smiley face and then clicking save. Um, if you are interested in grants or other uh, workshops that we have for free, you can always go to our website at www.arkansasarts.org. And um, thank you all for coming. That's thank you for I'm hosting. <clears throat> Thank you. It's nice to meet you. And I'm like, yes, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> here we are. But no, it's good. It's it's uh, great to see. I belong to a number of calligraphy guilds in the United States. So um, Arkansas, now I'm introduced. So I will check you out. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank We're you. pretty much just a Facebook group right now. And I'm the admin. So <laughs> that's all right. We have to go somewhere, right? We have to put it out there. So I dropped yeah, the Facebook wonderful. link too in the chat. So all of that is in the chat if y'all wanted to save that. So okay. Oh, thanks, Scarlett. Bye. I guess I'll see you guys later. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Scarlett. <laughs>